So in this video, we've got the Electrovoice ZLX-12BT and the Harbinger V3412. Now this is a 10 year old speaker, which is pretty much, I'll be honest, pretty state of the art for something that's 10 years old versus a brand new speaker from Harbinger. Now there's lots of features that are similar, lots of features that are different, but we're gonna start with the big thing everybody talks about lately, and that's price. We were dealing with inflation. We're seeing it everywhere. We're seeing it all the time. This speaker over its lifespan, or at least since the last three and a half, four years, this speaker has gone up in price $100. Now it does offer Bluetooth, which it originally did not 10 years ago. It just was powered speaker with a 3.5, but now it does have Bluetooth to it. And it does have an impressive sound quality. Now. I've featured this speaker in many videos. Why? Because it is a very good benchmark in a speaker when it comes to price point, features, benefits, reference to sound quality. The ZLX is the way to go. Now, problem is, is that there's a lot of great speakers out there that are really racing to compete against this particular speaker here. And we see it all the time. And there is where we come into the Harbinger, the Harbinger V3412, big run for the money. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about some of those great things that they're doing that 10 years ago you just didn't do or you weren't able to get to. And also how evolution, when this speaker came out, Harbinger was just a baby. And it was way back when their speakers were pretty much something you'd buy for your kids but I mean, most speakers that were starting price points back then were like that. If you go back to, you know, a 2012, 2013 series speakers, only then the company starts saying, we're going to make a reasonably priced speaker so you can have something to rehearse with in your garage. And now, absolutely amazing. Four generations, at least four generations later. Yes, there is a 3000, there is a 4000, but you kind of knew when they came out three years ago, with the 4000 series, so they had a 2000 and then a 4000, that eventually they were gonna come out with a 3000, something right in the middle, and that's what you have here. It wasn't really ready at the time, but it's certainly here now, and it has a lot of features that are just going to overwhelm the ZLX. And again, back to my original statement of, well, we have to look at inflation, and what do we get here? If it's not on sale, $400, $399.99, available at a lot of places. And if you're lucky like it is today, today happens to be Friday the 13th, 2023, and it is available for 15% off at Musician's Friend. That tag, by the way, will be at the end of this video. So you always wanna check for sales. This guy could be on sale. I've seen this guy with $50 off sale tags, $35 off sale tags. So it doesn't exclude this from being on sale. So again, this will be available at the same time. Also to say, neither one of these guys have ever paid for my opinion. That's the most important part. What I talked to you about today, and I've talked to you about in other videos, that's me. That's not somebody going, here Robin, let me pay you off. That's not what's happening here. Now let's talk about some of the great benefits that we have on both sides. So both these speakers can be used for a full frequency flat response type speaker. So if you need to use it with your guitar, something in front of you to play against, you can do that and you're gonna get an accurate, equal reproduction of sound out of both of them. Now, I have stood in front of both these speakers a meter away with them being about six to eight feet apart. Now the difference is, this one now has the ability to throw out a little bit tighter, a little bit faster, even though they advertise both the same 60 by 90. This one is doing a much nicer job at getting that stereo effect across the room at a closer range to the speaker. So that's a big, big positive when it comes to the actual new Harbinger. Now, there is one drawback to the Harbinger. We're gonna get that out right away. And it's not that the name tag comes off, by the way, because mine's on pretty solid. Uh, and they are on all the models, so bad luck, I guess, is the ZLX is a lighter speaker. Not as heavy, probably by about five to 10 pounds, maybe, than the actual Harbinger. So if you're looking for extremely light speaker, uh, five to 10 pounds heavier on the Harbinger side. But 
there's an advantage to that. It means more power on the Harbinger side. DB wise, definitely louder. For me to just do an equal comparison sound test to both these speakers, the Electro Voice had to be six dBs louder on the actual control panel in the back to match up with what was going on on the Harbinger. So 12 o'clock on both these guys, which normally gives me the optimal output for a balanced drive on both these guys, but I had to digitally add an extra six to the main volume output, which is the main dial on the back. And then they were balanced. So I knew that going in that I thought the Harbinger was louder, but definitely it is. Now again, that has more to do with the fact that this is 10 years old and 10 years ago, this was state of the art when it came to power and performance. It set the benchmark. It was more powerful than what you would see from a JBL or a Mac or anything in its own price comparison back in the day. But since then, companies have started to get in front of it when it comes to power. But again, if you're gonna use it as a stage monitor for yourself and you have a lot of gear, the Electro Voice is gonna do a really great job of that. Also, the Electro Voice is very good for mixing with other brands, not just their own. When they have their speaker against all their other speakers, the reproduction of sound in front of you is pretty balanced between this versus all their other speakers, which cost three, four, five times as much as this one. So that's very important to say. Now, that being said, reproduction of sound here, I could not hear a ton of difference. We're, we're gonna say mild difference. Uh, we're not saying it's the difference between coffee and tea. It's not like definitely, oh, I knew there was something different, but it was subtle, but yet there. Now that's because both these speakers have different ways of actually EQing themselves to create a balanced sound out of the boxes they're in. So these things are always gonna play. So you do wanna go down to the actual store, take a listen to them. Now, over here, what's happening is that tweeter, where that technology wasn't even around back when this speaker was made. Five, six years ago, the actual technology that drives the tweeter started to come into play. And that's, you know, it's a material called Peak. And it is a plastic, it's not a metal material. It is plastic and it looks like plastic, but it looks like more of a clear, like a titanium color uh, when usually mixed. And it has the consistency of like bone if we're gonna say anything. So if we're gonna say what kind of reproduction of sound can this have, which is why, by the way, it's been used for years on studio monitors, is because it gives almost the same reproduction that, that actually our ear wants to hear, uh, the same type of material that our actual ear structure is made of. That's kind of what's going on here. So we're getting a much more natural, especially when you're at like one kilohertz and higher in frequency when the actual tweeter starts doing its job really well, that that sound really, really makes a definite signature for itself. And it sounds true, really, really nice, smooth at any volume level. So it's really nice to see it here. And again, they compensate. They do it all through EQing on the Electro Voice. So it's a lot of technology driving this particular speaker here for, again, a 10-year-old speaker. So when you're listening to this in the studio, remember, yes, you're gonna be a little bit like, ooh, the price, but, you're gonna say, not bad for something that's 10 years old, especially if you're buying a secondhand one. If it's running well, you can get this for a really good price and that's okay. But again, $400, $350 it's on sale over here. And we're not seeing that big, big separation that you would expect. So when you go down to the store and you ask them to do, you know, an AB comparison with something you're familiar to listen to, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. So again, Buying speakers isn't just about the one, it's usually about buying a pair and maybe adding subwoofers to it. And it's all very important and that all adds up. So you do wanna be a little more price conscious when you're taking money out of your wallet and putting it down on the counter. Now, if it's a corporation, I've seen it all the time. Big companies, they don't care. They just, you know, what's the best thing out there? Even if it's more than what they need, they're happy to spend the money. Or if you're in a big business of commercial rentals, large stuff, big events, people pay big money, they don't care. But if you actually have to look at the money in your wallet and make that choice on how much you're gonna put on that counter when you buy something, you might be looking at the Harbinger next time you go down to the store. So now we're gonna take a look at the features in the back, but remember, I'm saying there's no real difference between reproduction and sound, especially on the lower frequencies on these guys, and the highs, Coke and Pepsi are the differences. I think they're so close, that if I had to run one of each 
for a show, people aren't really going to notice if I balance out the volume because I have this one set up for my testing purposes in a live setting. This one set up in a standard setting. And after I added six dBs to the electro voice outside of actually physically standing in front of one versus the other, couldn't really tell a big difference. Now, that being said, the one thing everybody always asks for, for some particular reason, because they all think that this is going into a church and we're all going to stand a foot away from the speaker, is what's the hiss like? Identical. I heard the exact same amount of hiss to my ear, which I've been using for, you know, 30 plus years to do this. The hiss level is pretty much the same. Now, where does the hiss come from? If you have a home theater system, if you have a home stereo, if you have a power amp at home, a preamp, a receiver, that sort of equipment at home, when you turn up and down the volume on that, you're actually physically turning up and down the amp, the power side of things. The preamp side is all fixed. So let's talk, you know, old school CD players, tape decks, turntables, that sort of thing. When that's plugged in, those are fixed signals. They're not variable. Now, when you turn up that volume, you are physically turning up the amplifier, the power side of things. So any distortion or hissing in the background is proportionate to the volume knob. So it's low, it's always low, but it's gonna be gradual going up that dial. Now, on powered speakers, we need to have that power ready to go. And plus, we're not gonna have the ability from whatever we're using, our controller or mixer, to actually drive the power into the speaker. So what we're doing is we're controlling the preamp level. So the speaker's constantly running hot. When I turn this thing on, even if I have the gains and the volume, the, the actual preamp controls down in the back, the amplifier is going on right away, which is why I always say, you wanna turn your speakers on last. Turn on all your equipment first, then turn on your speakers because we don't wanna have all that racing, you know, any power surges going to the speaker because we're gonna get that big popping sound. That's because regardless if you have the volume down or not, the actual power is hot. You've got a lot of energy ready to go out of the speaker. And that energy also carries the background noise. That subtle little hiss that we hear if we're very quiet and the room has got no noise in it. That being said, the same. So don't feel bad if you hear a little bit of it because when you go out into a live setting, you're not gonna hear it. Difference between PA systems versus actual studio monitors as well so different video for a different day so let's cover some of the features on the back of the speaker see what's new and exciting see how they make things work and figure out which one might be right for you so let's give ourselves a quick reminder of what we see on the back of the zlx now this is really well designed again state of the art and still is very strong when it comes to features and performance on one particular speaker now this speaker has paid off as being electro voices best-selling speaker and may still be the world's number one selling speaker it's just an amazing piece of hardware now that being said let's take a look see at what makes it so popular we've got two combo jacks when it comes to input options so and we even have release mechanisms there which is very impressive now these are combo jacks so we can have the quarter inch and the xlrs plugged into either one or both now at the same time this has an aux input now this is traditionally what they first added to this system and then they integrated bluetooth a few years ago and made this the zlx 12 bt now, what makes this speaker really exciting, regardless if it was 10 years ago or today, is this actual display. So this display gives us a lot. Now, right here in front, if we actually had a signal coming into one, two, or in the Bluetooth or aux, we would see those meters being displayed right here. And it would even tell us when we're hitting our peak, our limit on the system on this display. Now, it also allows me, just by pressing this button here, to have access. And the first one I'm having access to is dB adjustment, meaning overall gain volumes on the whole system. That's right there. It also allows me the option to control the mode, the sound setting, the location mounting. So is it on a pole? Do we have it on a bracket? Now I set up as a monitor. These are all very important features to have. Now, all that's there listed. Now, this also has the ability to control and match up with a particular subwoofer. I think this is was one of the first actual models to do this. And that was very, very smart because besides having the frequency setups, it also had the models and it was also updated to include the ELX 200 series, the 12 SP. It was very, very smart, well done setup on the system. Then you've getting your additional bass and trouble controls built right in. 
your mix out option. So how is this actual output going to respond? They give you the option to make it a left or right. You can be very specific about it. So this way, if it's gonna be used in a stereo connection, you can make that choice. If it's just gonna be used for subwoofer output or if you're just doing a mixed stereo, you can leave it alone. LED options, again, we can have that set up as on, limit, which as means only gonna come on if the limit's reached, and off, of course. So all that's available to you as well. The display, we can adjust the brightness, contrast, and that's all for what we're seeing right here. Now this, remember, does not have an app option to it. Everything's gonna be done right here. You could program and restore any of your actual features. Streaming option is for the Bluetooth capability, which is again, very smart. We can turn that on and off. Now this only allows Bluetooth connectivity to one speaker. They're expecting you to use the actual output connection to the second speaker to have two of them connected. So Bluetooth to one, cable to the second. And that pretty much covers all the features on the back. Now their actual line controls and mic controls are set up in one dial. So as you come up from off, you're gonna bring that up to zero and then you're going to bring that up for the microphone control it's going to change there's a transition of impedance and gain on the actual unit when you go through this dial good and bad i like that it's one single switch but for somebody who's inexperienced and or really wants to just push that volume they can cheat but that can cause damage overall so now let's compare this to the v3412 from Harbinger. So on Harbinger, the amp plate's bigger. It's still just a solid, by the way. Uh, I didn't mention that on the first one. It is a thick piece of material when it comes to metal on the back of the unit, carrying the amp plate and all the actual preamp options on it. Now, what do we have? We have what we've seen before, two quarter inch combo options. So you can go XLR or quarter inch. Now you have a switch between your mic, guitar, and line inputs. So this way you can adjust this to the way you want to use it. So if you plan on using this all on its own, no extra, you have all the controls right there. Offered on both, again, with actual gain controls on top with clip limiter lights on them as well. Then besides that, here's something new. We don't just have our 3.5 and our Bluetooth. Our Bluetooth has a quick and easy off on option and pairing option. So if I don't want to have it engaged at all, I can certainly turn it off. If I want, I can turn it on, pair to it, do all these features. But their Bluetooth offers a smart connectivity with the second speaker. It's called TWS True Wireless Stereo. So you can just have your two speakers connected via Bluetooth Quick and easy, no problem. As an added bonus, if you wanted to plug in something directly into the back via quarter inch in stereo, both left and right are offered here, but you can just plug into the left channel and that'll give you a good mono signal. Bass and treble controls offered on the actual unit directly as an analog option in the back. But more importantly, this speaker comes with an app. So no display panel on this particular series here. And that was to help save some money. Everything else is driven on the app, which can now be used on both an Android or an iOS device. So no worries there. It allows you to either manually control your speaker settings, or you can have it in the custom app setting and do it all from there. You can manually control your subwoofer options off the back here. Again, this is giving you quick one touch access to the actual system. You have the options to create a save file just by pressing and holding the button. Very nice features. Now, when we come down here, here is where we're gonna see some more modern features offered on this speaker here, which has to do with the actual syncing with a second speaker. So this way we can create a smart connection between our systems. This is gonna help us control our subwoofers and our left, right speakers as well, using the link in, link out option for a second speaker, and then having the options like having it play in normal mono settings, or we can create a stereo setting and we can have a link. So if our second speaker is linked in, so this being our second one, we can do that as well. And still offering you a mixed out. Notice we have two outputs, linked out, which is how we connect our two main speakers, and a mixed out, which is how we can connect our subwoofer. And look at that, right down here at the bottom, we now have a five volt, 2100 milliamp USB connection, because so many accessories that we have need to be powered via USB. You can do that directly on the back, not having to worry about having any special power cord or extensions or add-ons to make that happen. It's gonna happen all direct right here. So there you go. Again, adding the app onto this gives you the freedom of going front of house and doing all the setups with the system. So you're not constantly going into the back of the speaker to make the adjustments. Do that all from front of house. Again, this is the V3412. Pretty impressive stuff. Again, 10 years separate the two speakers but you can really see it when you look at the overall feature package. 
Now that we've covered everything in the back, I know there's lots of comments and questions going on down below. Don't forget to hit the like, comment, and all that kind of stuff for me, please. That's very important, especially if you want to see more of these. If you want to see other comparisons, let me know. I can always reach out and see what I can do about getting products to do these things. Remember, I try not to have comparisons that are so spread apart that just doesn't make sense. Uh, so if the opportunity comes that I have products that are close together or within price range of each other, those are always good comparisons to talk about. So let's give a second here to the actual physical body of the boxes here on both of them. Now, they do have a full metal jacket cover on the front of their unit. They do have a built-in diffuser, all part of the standard package, which is very good. That means we're not going to get any bad sound off the actual grill itself through vibrations or distortions. Same thing happens over here. Different design, different pattern, but we're seeing the same setup. Now, they've gone one step further because again, you can really push the engineering and design and this has to do with the molded plastic materials that they're using. Again, they've upgraded, it's, it's all gas assisted injected molding here. So you can be a little more funkier with the case while maintaining quality and consistency. So here we end up with a little bit more design work to it. We end up a little bit more on the inside when it comes to structural design and features, allowing this box to be as stable as this box with a different design. Both speakers offer light package options in the front for limiting or just knowing if they're on or off. Those lights options are there. You can turn them off, no problem. Handle placements are very similar. I do like the overall handle option that the actual Electro Voice has by offering that second handle at the bottom of the speaker. But I do have to say a lot of times when I am taking these off and on the actual poles, I tend to always have to grab on with one hand and grab the pole with the other and pull it off if nobody's there to help you. But getting it on is very nice, especially if you have the pole slightly higher because with that second handle at the bottom, you can get up in the air a little bit better and bring it down and feel really safe about what you're doing. Both companies use the actual box itself, including the handles to improve the actual structural design of the actual cabinet to give it a more natural reproduction of sound through the box itself. They both, of course, offer the option to be set up as monitors on the floor and they set up themselves exactly the same. So they both have it so that the handle is on the same side as the actual rubber spaces for the floor mounting. So they both do that, the same on both speakers. Now, you know, that's great and all, except that it leaves you only with the top handle to set the speaker down and nothing else. Because, you know, this is the bottom of the speaker. Those are the actual tapered edges. And this is the side that you're going to see as a performer, somebody well on the audience side. So, I mean, it does look more attractive, but it means you only have that one handle to lay it down and get it rolling. So, but not to make it unique. They're both like that. So it is what it is. And as for branding, of course, just the nameplate glued onto the front here, where here you get the branding at the bottom. Nice thing is they've got rid of the red. I know a lot of people like the red because it kind of like punches out there, but they got rid of it. So this way it became more natural in the background and they have the series labeled on top because they're 2000, 3000, 4000, all cosmetically look the same. So something distinguishing them would be nice. And again, it's on there rock solid. So no, they're not falling off for me. It could happen, I guess but not for me. And again, I know you've got a lot of comments and questions, so please hit those down below. Hit that like button. Hopefully this worked out for you today. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Next time, by the way, if you're looking for another video, if I've already done it, it'll be tagged at the end. It'll be part of the series, the comparison series. So we are going to be bringing back the Icoa 15 and having it compare against Harbinger's 15 inch. Now again, price points are a little off, but overall features that's going to be pretty exciting to talk about. So when we look at the 15 inch, it's going to be ICOA versus the 3415. So if you're looking to subscribe, or if you're not sure if you have, just click on the actual palm tree. That will help you out right there. And if you want to know the next video, ta -da, right there. But just as important, Musician's Friend is now right here. Look at this, that box. That is Musician's Friend. You can click on that right there. That'll be awesome.